Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. We are making some pana breadfruit. We're gonna make tostones. So we're gonna make like like what, what you would make with platanos, but we're making it with tostones. So this 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 here is a breadfruit. It's just una pana. This one came from Puerto Rico. My mother sent it to me. So she takes out the stem. So that was easier to travel. Um and they don't really give you much hassle in the airport. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do this in probably three separate ways. So number one is, oh my God, is that I'm going to cut it in half if I had the strength. So, oh, I just landed in water, sorry. So um, this is what it looks like. It has like a little heart here. We do not eat this, so we take it out. So there's three ways I'm going to do this. Number one is, is that I'm gonna keep some apart so that way I can have it tomorrow. And the, what I'm gonna have tomorrow is boil. And for me to have it boil, I'm the only one that eats it boiled. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove the heart. Um, I'm actually gonna remove a little bit more of it. This is the this part i don't eat it like that but i do fry it so i'm gonna set it aside so this is gonna be for me to eat later i'm gonna remove the little hard thing and then i'm just gonna keep the bottom so i can fry this i make tostones out of this so i think that's good for me to eat tomorrow the rest of it i'm gonna make para and i'm gonna make um, tostones. Now, what I'm going to do for now is cut it and try to remove the little heart to most of them. Then I got to peel them. While I do that, you can do me a favor and just hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment. Just say what's up. That's all you need to say. You don't need to say much. Just what's up. Help me out a ton. And just share the video. Doesn't take you much much time to do this so so meantime i'm going to be removing this little heart and i don't mind that this still has this part because i will be frying this now if i was going to eat like that then i will remove it but since i'm making either tostones or pananutre then it maintains like this so let me finish doing that and then i'll show you how i peel them okay so this is super simple this is the one that i'm eating boiled so i'm just gonna go ahead and peel it use a potato peel it doesn't take a few seconds to do i'm gonna keep that aside i might do one more because i feel like that's too little and i'm actually gonna i think i'm gonna do a little bit more than that because i think i'm gonna do some for i think i'm gonna take some so i can make something else un guiso so i'm gonna take out a little bit more than that um but what i'm doing to all of them right now is just peeling them um, I'll show you which ones I'm going to eat and which ones I'm going to eat straight up boil and which ones I'm going to eat in with pana, with pana, with a guiso. So this here, I'm going to set these aside. I'm going to peel the rest and I'll be right back. So everything is peeled. Now, this are the ones that I'm eating just like that. So what I normally do to this is just cut them in half and set them aside. And these I'm going to put in a little baggie. And I will be eating those tomorrow, probably for lunch. Um, with some bacalao. So I'm gonna put these aside in a little Ziploc bag and we'll set it aside. These other ones that I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them in half and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut them. Just thin. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut them into little pieces. Cut it, cut it in thirds. And I'm going to do them this size, more or less. And this is going to be done with some white beans as a guiso. Um, so pretty much that's what I'm going to do with these. Um... I'm gonna do this with guiso and 
simply, how do I put it? Set these aside again for tomorrow so I can cook them. And I will probably go ahead and do a video on how I cook these so you guys can see it. But I will let you know. Let me finish cutting these up and I will show you. Okay, so all I'm doing is putting in my um, my little pieces of bread fruit or pana into a Ziploc bag, which I will be using tomorrow most likely. And this is it. This is going to be for a guiso. And what is the guiso? It's going to be white beans cooked in broth pretty much. So I'm going to set this aside and then we're going to go ahead and get started with the following step. Okay, so just for the record, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my stove. And I'm going to set these. These pieces are going to be for the, um, what is it? For the tostones de pana. And we can either go sideways and we can cut them. More or less. Um... So, again, more or less. Okay, so I'm doing these and I'm going to put them in a little bowl with some water that I have over here with some salt. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I think this is fine for the panas. And the next step is while my oil is heating is that I have a little mandolin here and I'm gonna try to get a few of these to make um, pananutre. Pananutre is, is almost the same thing except it's like those plantain chips. Well, these are breadfruit chips. You do this carefully because you do not want to cut yourself. So I will show you. What these look up uh, what these look like in a second I don't want to cut myself and so I'm gonna keep these aside these little ones so that way anyways I'm gonna continue to do this but this is more or less the thickness that I'm making these so I'm making these pretty thin so I'm gonna continue to do that while my oil heats up so my oil is heating up I'm just gonna go ahead and put one into test and it is seems to be nice and hot so i'm gonna go ahead and start with the pananutres and i'm gonna add i don't want to overcrowd the pan and we want these to be separated so they're fairly thin so once it starts heating up you want to keep an eye on them because of the fact that um you um you don't want nothing burning so so we keep an eye on it so that's what we're doing for now the uh the flat the ones for my platanos for the tostones are actually in water with a little bit of salt and i'm gonna put my other ones in the refrigerator and then what we'll do for these, we can do a mayo ketchup or we can do a, like a garlic aioli. It's up to you. Well, it's up to me because you're not eating it, but <laughs> it all depends. So what we're going to do here is we want to keep an eye on it. And while this is cooking, you're going to go ahead and grab yourself either a bowl or whatever you feel is more comfortable. And you're going to put a piece of, uh, like, I don't know, like bounty or paper towel or whatever you want to call it. Um, and put that on the side because once these are ready, we're just going to take them out and put the rest. So, for right now, we're cooking these up until they are golden. So, you can tell these are gold, golden brown or getting there. We don't want to overdo them, but we do want them crisp. So we're going to have, like I said, that paper towel ready. So that when these are done, we just pop them out. 
And once they are drained, I'm going to put them in another container and then I will salt them because I do not want to, um, I don't want to eat a bunch of grease. So I, I need these to, to simply do that. And you could tell, like, look at this, nice and crisp. So we're going to set these aside and uh, I'm frying in canola oil. You could fry in whatever oil you feel like frying. So I'm putting these aside and I'm going to go ahead and put another set in. Um, just make sure if I'm, you're going to put them like that, just move them right away. So that way they don't stick. Okay, so we're taking out the second batch right now. Take a look at these. I'm going to remove these and put the last batch in of these. These are the pananutres. So these are the, the pana chips or the breadfruit chips. Um, I remember being with my mom in Puerto Rico. The, I think it was the first time I visited after 20 years or something. And she made me, she made, no it wasn't 20 years, it was less than that. But she made me pana nutres for me to take home. And oh, that was like my snack on the plane. And they were so delicious. So while these fry, I want to show you, I'm putting them in here, right? And I and I move them around so that way they get soaked, the grease gets soaked by the towel. And then I put, I'm putting them in here where I will be seasoning them. Now, what am I going to use to season them? You can use adobo. But what I'm going to use is... um. I'm gonna use some garlic salt and some parsley to 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 give it the flavor that I want. Okay, so this is the last of the batch of the pananutres. And I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the, the tostones now. So the tostones, like like tostones de, 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 de platano, like what we would do with green plantains, we're gonna do with these. And what is that? Well, we're gonna grab them and we're gonna put them in the oil until they're golden. Uh, and the, and the, the reason that they're flattening is to have them in water. And once they're in golden, we're gonna flatten them. And let me just go on the other side and show you steps here. Okay, so we remove these straight out of the 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 tissue that we are using to get the oil out. And what we're going to do in there is that we're going to grab some garlic salt. And we're gonna grab some dried parsley. And what we do here is that we're gonna give it We're going to taste. Okay. A little more. So these are the pananutres. All the breadfruit chips, you could tell. Crunchy. So super crunchy. And you keep them in an airtight container, but make sure nothing is hot before you put them oil. So, while my platanos are frying, I just want you to hear the crunch factor on these on, on these pananutres. Take a look at that. Come on. You don't need chips. You just need pana. That's it. Pana. Okay, now to do these pana, um, what is it called? Those tostones so again we do the first fry after the first fry what we're gonna do is that we need to mash them and and that's a simple little thing here and I'll show you that now let me just put the other set in here so you can either use one of these or you could use um, a platano masher 
So we have a few different ones here. Just want to show you really quickly what I'm going to do with this. So you can just mash them as thin or as thick as you want. Or you can simply take one of these with the bigger ones and just go down on it and it'll do it for you. But I kind of like them a little thinner. That's why I'm going to use this. And then what we do is that whether you want to eat it now, if you want to eat them now, then you do a second fry in them now. And if you don't want to eat them now, you can just freeze these and then fry them later. And pretty much is what we're doing. I'll do a few now so you can see what it looks like. These here are the actual little, um, the hard part of it. What my mother would call el corazón. So, and um, that's, that's why these are a little crunchier. Because these are the little, they look like sea, um, what is it called? The, 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 whatever it is that you put in your fish tanks. I'm not even going to bother with that. A sponge? Is it a sponge that they use in the fish tanks? Oh. I don't know. I don't know. It looks like something like that. So, again, sell so these. And I'm going to have my daughter make um, a mayo ketchup really quickly. Um, mayo ketchup, we do equal parts, um, equal parts of mayo. Not, I don't, we don't do technically equal parts but it's no, normally it's equal parts mayo and ketchup and then we add some some garlic and in this case we add fresh garlic but we're going to use uh, a zester so that way we can get the consistencies to be super um what's the right word so you don't get big pieces of garlic in your mouth and and that's it so she's going to do that Again, she just puts mayo, um, ketchup in a, in a bowl and adds a little bit of mayo to it. And um, she's going to do probably one garlic clove to the amount that she's making. We'll see. I'll show you when she finishes. I've done this in other videos, so just I'll show you when she's done with it. So I'm going to grab a few of these just so I can show you all different types. I'm going to use, I'm going to take some of these. I look at the seed foam or whatever the heck she said it was and these um and i'm gonna fry them a second time for them to get the crunch and next thing i will show you is way, the way we serve it so there you have it pana nutres on one side and tostones on the other simply deliciousness all out of the same fruit because this is a bread fruit now most likely tomorrow I will be making the the guiso with the beans. But this is just a little snack you can have with some mayo ketchup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your family will love this. You can buy bread fruit anywhere now, in any market. Anyway, this is it. It's just Maddie here. Maddie's Puerto Rican Ketchup and More. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. That way when I put up a video... You guys get it first. And you know the routine. I will see you guys on the next video. God bless you. Bye.